Hey guys, Danny again. Um, so this is part two of our week eight talk about uh, introduction to the web and HTML and CSS. Um, so this section is going to be all about CSS. And CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So what we use CSS for is presentation, style, and layout. Um, so any sort of design, uh, aesthetic, or style, or uh, positioning, or color, or, or anything like that that we want to include on our website, that we use CSS for. So you could think of all of our HTML elements as being inside of a box. So whether that's a header, or um, paragraph text, or italic, or or bold, or anything, any other HTML elements. You can think of everything as being inside a box. And understanding how to use CSS is basically understanding how to apply styles to that box and the contents inside of that box. So if we wanted to um, apply a background color or a text color um, or change the size of this box for the header, we could do that with a CSS. So CSS is structured by having um, a selector, which is selecting the HTML element or, or, or tag or class name or ID name, um, and then applying a declaration to that um, selector. So in, in this case, we have a paragraph that we're selecting in our HTML. So any, any P would now be um, have the font family Arial associated to it. So within the um, within the declaration, we have the property, which is like the font family, the color, the size, um, its width, height, etc. And then we can apply a value to that property, like Arial or yellow or a hundred pixels or whatever. So here we have our HTML elements. We have a header at the top, a paragraph, and then we have um, some italic values inside, um, a subheader, and then another paragraph. So this is what it would look like if you rendered that um, in the browser window uh, without any CSS attached to it. So let's say we wanted to change the font family and, and the text color of um, all those elements. Um, so if you want to change everything on the, on the page, apply a value, um, a declaration to everything on the page, then you can re uh, reference the body tag. And then everything else would be inside that body tag um, would uh, get this font family at attached to it. Um, this is why it's called cascading style sheets, because um, it's cascading from the, um, the parents tag to all the children tag within, within the body, um, within the body tag. So everything inside of body is going to have this font family, Arial, Verdana, Sans Serif attached to it. Uh, when it comes to the fonts, you can apply a initial font font that you want um, to load. If that font doesn't ex exist on the machine, you can apply a, a backup font. If that doesn't exist, and you can have just a whatever sans serif or whatever serif font that they have on their machine load instead. Then in, for h1 and h2, we're applying this color, and it's a hex color. And then this paragraph, we're going to apply another hex color. So when we load that, we get um, the font is all the same across the board. And the color is going to be pink for the headers and subhead, and then a grayish color for the paragraphs. So there's a few different ways that you can um, attach your CSS to uh, your HTML file. Um, two ways that we're not going to talk about um, because it's it's best to do um, uh, this, this example of how to attach your CSS, but you can do um, inline CSS, which is inline with the HTML, 
and then you can add your CSS directly to the head uh, if you wanted to. But the best way to do it is to have an external file, external CSS file, and then link that file to your HTML document. Um, this is the better way to do it, mainly because if you have a website with multiple pages, it could be like three or four, but it could be hundreds. Um, and if you have CSS styles that uh, um, are attached to uh, all of those pages, uh, rather than going into each one to change the CSS, into each HTML document to change the CSS, you can just have a separate CSS document that is attached to all those, um, all those websites, all those HTML files. And then if you change anything in that CSS document, it'll automatically be applied to all the HTML files that are linked to it. So to do that, to create a, a CSS file, you can call it whatever you want. This one is called style.css. And in this case, we put it in a CSS folder. Um, to reference that file in our HTML, you use the link tag, set the href to, um, which is the hyper reference, a link to where that CSS document lives. And then you assign the type to be text CSS and the real to be a style sheet. So once you do that, then your CSS document is attached to your HTML. So anything you add to the styles.css file will be applied to whatever HTML document it's attached to. So here is another example of um, applying a font family and a background color to the body. And then we're applying a color to the um, paragraph styles here. So the font family is Arial. Um, you can add more just by adding a comma just for backup. And then for the colors, for the background color and the um, text color, um, we can use hex, hex values, which is what we looked at in the last example, or you could do RGB um, text colors. Uh, RGB stands for red, green, and blue. I believe you could do um, other values like uh, HSB, and you can also just type a color. So if you just want it to be white, you could type white. If you want it to be black, you could type black. Um, but that's, those only work for a certain number of colors. So this is what it would look like when it gets rendered. So here are some CSS selectors. Um, so there is a universal selector where you can just use the star symbol. Um, I generally use uh, body instead of star, but I think both work. Uh, there are type selectors like H1, H2, and H3. And then there are class selectors. So we talked about classes and IDs a little bit in the last lecture when we talked about HTML. Um, but here we can have a class reference, whatever class we're using in the HTML by um, putting a, a period and then the name of the class. Um, you could also be very specific. So if you, this class is um, associated with a paragraph, you could say, okay, find P's that have the class note associated to it. And then for IDs, if you wanted to apply any sort of styles to the IDs, uh, you use the, the hashtag, the number sign, and then the name of that ID that you're using in your HTML. And then you could apply styles to that as well. So here's another example. So we're applying um, a font family to everything, universal, and a text color to everything. Um, our H1, uh, we, Oops. Our H1, we are applying a courier um, font family to that H1. So if we didn't do that, then um, it would be Arial, but you can override this value with any other elements that are inside. Um, so we could override the font family or we could override the color as well. So for um, italics, we are applying the color green uh, but there is a little um, trick here that you should be aware of is that everything gets red from the top down. So here we're saying, okay, italics should be green first and then italics should be red second. Um, the red is going to 
uh, went out over the green because it is um, after the green. So green will be ignored essentially. If you wanted to override that, you can. So here um, we're saying any sort of bold paragraph, anything that's bold in paragraph, um, the color should be blue. And then the second is the color should be violet. But we added this exclamation mark important to blue. So that's gonna override anything that's um, after this blue area. So if that wasn't there, then it would, yes, it would be violet. But because we said, um, it is important, then it's going to be blue. This is going to override the violet. So this is what it should look like. Inheritance. So um, you can define something as inherit inheriting a value from its parents uh, tag, uh, tag element. Um, so body is going to have font family, varial, color, and then padding of 10 pixels. And then the page class is going to have a border, a background color, and then padding, we're going to inherit the padding from body, which is the parent, um, the parent tag. So we should be inheriting 10 pixels from body here. This not everything um, gets passed on from its parent to its children. Um, color and fonts do, but padding and margin, I believe, don't. So this is what it would look like when it gets rendered. So foreground color um, or text color. Here is some a few examples of how you can apply a color to a header value or a paragraph value. So if color, if you just reference the uh, color, then it's just going to be the foreground color or the text color. So like I said earlier, you could do um, just type in a, uh, a color word, um, like white or black. In this case, we're just typing dark cyan. Um, then for H2, we're using a hex value. And then for the paragraph, we're using RGB, red, green, and blue. So those are uh, three different ways of applying a color value to the foreground color or the text color. So this is what it looks like when it gets rendered in the browser. Background color, same idea. You just reference background color and then apply a color to it. So again, we have RGB. We're just using dark cyan, a hex value, and then white. So this is what it looks like when it gets rendered. Font family. Um, so like I said earlier, you can have uh, multiple options that are like fallback options when it comes to the fonts. Uh, so the body is going to be Georgia and times and serif. So if Georgia doesn't exist on that person's computer, then it's going to be times if that doesn't exist. That's going to be a serif, whatever serif font they have on their machine. And then we could override the font family uh, with anything else inside a body. So H1 and H2. Font family is going to be Arial, Verdana, and Sans Serif. And then we have a credits uh, class, and that's going to be courier or monospace. So that's what it looks like when it gets rendered. So we have our credits which is courier, which is a monoface typeface. And then um, everything else has its own typeface as well, based off of the CSS. Font size. So font size allows you to change the size of the text. So the body is going to be um, 12 pixels. So you do it as pixels value. You could do it as a percentage value. So H1 is going to be 200%. Or you could do it as an M value, which is similar to percent. It's 1.3 Ms for the credits. So this is what it looks like when it gets rendered, etc. So there's plenty of other attributes. Those are just some of the basic ones that we are talking about. Um, but there's font weight, 
Uh, you can apply a weight, whether that's bold or normal. There's font, font stance, uh, style, uh, that could be italic. There's text decoration, like underline, text transformation, like uppercase or lowercase. Um, line height, uh, which would be um, kind of like the kerning, which is 1.4M. Letter spacing, which is, uh, sorry, line height would be letting, letter spacing would be the kerning. And then you could also do word spacing too. So there's lots of other options that we're not necessarily covering in this, um, but you can find whatever you're looking for uh, by just doing a quick um, online search. You could also do styling for links um, and you can apply different styles to different, um, I guess, uh, interactions on that link. So if you do uh, A and then the colon link, that's just gonna be what it looks like when it's loaded. A colon visited is gonna, gonna be what it looks like uh, if you've clicked on it and visited that, that page. Um, A colon hover is gonna be the hover state. So in this case, it's gonna change from, uh, or stay deep pink, but have an underline when you hover over it. And then active is when you're actually actively clicking on it. It can have, a, in this case, a color of dark cyan. So this is an example of that. So on hover, it's going to be dark cyan. Uh, and, or sorry, on uh, interactive, it's going to be dark cyan. And on hover, it's going to be underlined. Um, if it's clicked on already, then it's going to be black. And if it hasn't been interactive with it at all, then it's going to be um, cyan color. So you can also have um, general purpose boxes. Uh, this is great when it comes to um, when it comes to layout. So putting uh, boxes into like different columns or like a header area and a footer area. For that, you can use um, a div, which is I think I think it was uh, named that because it's called a, like a divider or something but there's a div that's just kind of a general purpose box that you could put content into. Um, so you can assign a width and a height to that box, and in this case, a background color. And then uh, we have a P, a paragraph um, style that we're also applying to this example. So here we have the box, which is the magenta background color. And then there's a P paragraph box in here that is, um, I think, what is it? 75% of the width and height of the exterior div box. So that's why we see 25% of the background of that div, and then the rest is the paragraph box with a different color, background color. So the next thing I wanna talk about is borders, margins, and padding when it comes to the boxes that are containing all this content. So the border is this yellow line, which is the border of the, the box. The margin is the space um, on the exterior of the box. And the padding is the space on the interior of the box. So here we're playing around with uh, the border uh, width. So there's a couple of different um, values that you could apply to that. So one is just saying um, pixels. Another is saying that I want this to be thick or double thick. There's some terms that you could use. And then you could also apply um, uh, four different values to border width. And it's basically gonna give a different width, a different thickness for each side of the box. Um, it's also gonna start from the, the top of the box and go clockwise to the right. So this is gonna be the top, right, bottom, and left. Um, if you just have two values in here, then it's just gonna be the top and bottom for the first one and the left and right for the second one. So this is what happens when you do two pixels at the top, thick, 
and then have a, a different um, pixel width for all four sides. Um, so for centering content, um, for text, you can use text align and then do center or left or right. Um, if you want to do anything that is uh, centering a actual box element. Uh, so here we have two paragraphs. One has a, a class associated to it called example. The other doesn't have a cl that class associated to it. It's just a paragraph. So all paragraphs are going to have a width of 300 pixels, padding of 50 pixels, and then a border of 20 pixels that's going to be uh, solid and then have this color. So this is kind of shorthand if you want to um, give a border thickness, um, whether it's solid or dotted, and then also give it a color. And then uh, for any paragraph that has the example class associated to it, um, we're going to assign a margin of 10 pixels on the top, auto on the right, 10 pixels on the bottom, and then auto on the left. So for auto, uh, that basically means we want to auto, auto change the, the, the margin on both the left and right hand side, depending on the width of the browser window. And that's basically just going to put that, that box directly in the center of the browser window. No matter the um, no matter the width of that uh, browser window, and then we're gonna also align the text to the left inside of this paragraph um, example class. So this is what it looks like. So the first paragraph doesn't have the example class associated to it, so that's why it's on the left, and that's why the text is centered. But the second paragraph has the example. Um, class associated to it. So it is the box is centered on the screen, centered in the browser, and the text is um, left aligned. So anything you want uh, centered in the window, you're going to have to use the margin auto uh, technique to do, do that. So with images, you can control the um, style of any image uh, using CSS um, as well as doing it in HTML. Um, it's probably better to do that in CSS just for consistency purposes and updating. So here we have an image um, tag, and then we have three classes associated to the, that image tag. So it could be a large, medium, and small. Um, for that, we're just changing the size of the image to be 500 by 500 pixels, 250 by 250 pixels, and 100 by 100 pixels. So if we apply that any one of those classes, large, medium, and small, to um, an image tag in our HTML, then we should get those sizes being applied to that particular image. So this is large, medium, and small. Um, you could also apply background images um, to any HTML element. So if you wanted to have a background image uh, in this, in this case, the paragraph, then you could say, okay, I want to apply this image, which is in our images folder, um, and it's called pattern.gif. Uh, so for background image, the value is going to be the URL of where this image lives in our root directory. So if you do that, then it's going to, by default, take that background image and uh, repeat it in the background of this paragraph. Um, you could also uh, basically control the type of repeat that the background is going to do. So in this case, we're applying a background image to the body of our of our website and we are saying okay we don't want to repeat on the x and y axis we just want to, want to repeat along the x axis so it's just going to go from left to right and not from top to bottom like so so um, when we were talking about html we briefly talked about the difference between the two type of elements in HTML, 
there's block elements and inline elements. Um, so block elements are like uh, headers and paragraphs, and those are just um, stacked on top of each other and like on uh, kind of like building blocks uh, or like boxes stacked on top of each other. Then inline elements are like um, bold, italic, and also images are all inline elements. And those are basically just going to be in line with the other content, in this case, uh, paragraphs. So it's just in line, not on top of. So you can update and change uh, block elements to inline elements and inline elements to block elements using um, certain techniques. Uh, this is great if you want to do like um, a custom layout where you have uh, different columns or um, different uh, rows and columns of like images, for example. Uh, or in this example, we have a header um, and then main container and then a footer on the bottom. So we can use um, positioning to change the positioning of that particular layout to get the different elements to be positioned in the right um, design that we're working with. So for controlling positioning, the normal flow is just kind of what is default. So in this case, uh, we have a header at the top and then paragraphs below. So by default, everything's just going to be, the header is going to be stacked since it's a block element on top of the paragraphs and the paragraphs are going to be stacked on top of each other. There is relative positioning. So if you wanted to do a relative positioning for this paragraph, it's going to be um, changing the positioning based off of the previous element. So this paragraph. So the start location would be right after this paragraph. And then if you move it uh, down from the top and then to the right, it's going to be moved from this starting point, essentially, right below this, this first paragraph. There's absolute positioning. So this header is uh, absolute position, um, basically saying, OK, I always, I definitely want this position to be um, absolutely there unless I'm scrolling, then I'll scroll up or down depending on um, uh, the scroll and the amount of content on your website. Then there's fixed positioning. So fixed positioning basically is always going to be in that location. Whether it's scrolling or not, it's always going to be fixed in that one location. Um, and then there's uh, another technique called floating. So you can float elements to the left or to the right. And those will basically um, allow you to turn block elements into inline elements. So if we wanted to float uh, paragraphs next to, next to each other um, from the left to the right rather than stacked on top of each other, then we could say apply um, float uh, left to all those paragraphs and give it a width and then they should be all right next to each other. So floating elements side by side like I was just describing. Um, so here we have our body. The body has a width of 750 pixels, has a font family and then a, a color for the text. Then our paragraphs were floating left. We have a width of 230 pixels and a margin and padding. And then we also have a background color for, for all of our paragraphs. So because we have a width assigned to this pair, uh, to all these paragraphs, and we're saying float left, rather than being stacked on top of each other, they're going to be um, floated, floating side by side next to each other until it gets to the end of the body. Then it's going to wrap to the next line. So it should look something like this. So rather than all of these paragraphs being stacked on top of each other, they're floating side by side. Uh, so this is the first paragraph, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So this is great if you want to do columns or um, a grid of images or grid of paragraphs. Um, so you could also do uh, create uh, like two or three columns if you wanted to. If you want to have like a sidebar on your website, you can have um, use float to 
um, apply that to like a div or something, div container. And then you could have uh, a class for column one of two and then column two of two. Again, you can name those whatever you want. Um, then we're gonna float both of those left and then give both of those a width and then uh, also a margin. So again, rather than being stacked on top of each other, um, we have our left column here and then our right column here. And the only reason why they're side by side is because we're applied a width to it and then also are floating those, um, those elements uh, to, the left, to the left together. So that is the basic um, lecture. Hopefully, again, that is a review uh, when it comes to CSS. Um, again, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it should be used for any sort of design or stylistic elements um, on your website um, that get applied to your HTML. All right, so in the next video, we're going to be doing a, a live demo using glitch.me as a programming environment to build a very simple uh, website um, that you can use as a, as a starting starting point for your um, homework this this uh, this week um, where you're going to be building your own personal website um, that explains more about who you are and what your interests are. Um, all right, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks.